So, step 4 is the modification of the finally selected ground motions uh, such that they become compatible with your site spectrum right target spectrum. Target spectrum is the one which you will construct from building codes equation uh, using the hazard parameter of your site or it will come from PSHA, but this spectrum will define the hazard level of your site right. If a spectrum is this one like this one it will tell you that what peak spectral acceleration you should expect at this site in what range of time periods and for each time period it will give you the spectral acceleration value. Now, the ground motions which you finally selected they may have a different spectrum they will have a different spectrum uh, which will not be matching with this target spectrum. So, which means that currently they are not ready to be used for dynamic analysis because they are representing a different hazard level. Their amplitude should be increased or decreased such that they match with the hazard level of your site right. So, this process is called modification of ground motions. So, first you select while selecting you consider everything, but then once you select few ground motions then you modify them again to exactly make them compatible with the hazard expected at your site. So, you either will be using spectral scaling or spectral matching these are the two techniques which used for the modification of ground motion right. In spectral scaling you simply apply a constant factor to your ground motion. For example, let me ok let me explain here. Let us say that you plot the spe target spectrum of your site this is the spectrum S A versus time period. So, this the numbers are all known now this is the spectrum of d b level for your site and let us say that you want to perform the time history analysis for d b level. So, this curve defines the hazard level of your site. Now, you select a particular ground motion which will have two horizontal components. So, you plot their own spectrum use seismo signal or your own code which you may write and you run the single degree of freedom system again and again against that ground motion 5 percent damping and you construct the spectrum. Let us say that that spectrum comes out to be like this it will be irregular obviously. So, now with this exercise you came to know that the hazard level in this particular ground motion uh, is lower than what is expected at my site right. The peak spectral acceleration the P g a value is lower than what is expected at my site. Same obviously, you will be doing it for the second component of ground motion and for other ground motions right. So, I am just using one example component of a real earthquake. So, this is the spectrum of a component one horizontal component of uh, one past earthquake right and the smooth spectrum is the code spectrum or target spectrum target spectrum. So, spectral matching simply says obviously, I have now the acceleration time history for uh, my u g dot dot versus time that is available for the selected ground motion. So, I convert that time history into spectrum and I get this irregular line right. So, spectral uh, scaling first technique says that you simply compute a factor which is the ratio of uh, the it can either be the ratio of 2 p g s or it can be the ratio of 2 peak spectral accelerations right. Mostly they are the ratio of p g s right. So, let us say this is uh, uh, let us say 1.5 g was the p g a which is expected at your site and the actual earthquake is starting from 0 0.75 g which means it has a p g of 0 0.75 g. So, the ratio is 2 right. So, you will simply multiply this original time history with 2 right and you construct a new time history which is obviously now amplified having the same shape 
but amplify two times right and once you construct the spectrum of this amplified ground motion it will be simply up by a scale of 2 right so it it will the pga now will match with this one right so now the modified earthquake will have a spectrum which which will look like this right for most of the range it will be very close to the target spectrum obviously this technique will not give you exact matching because it is just one constant multiplied by the whole history so you are not modifying the frequency content of your ground shaking you are simply scaling it up or uh, scaling it down if the actual earthquake was up you, you will apply a scale factor less than 1 right so you will bring it uh, close to your target spectrum so now there are different techniques in it some say that you should keep a particular range of time period in mind for example it will say that this is your time period t1 first mode time period so slightly less than that and more than that there will be a range of time period in which you should ensure that the uh, the actual earthquakes modified earthquakes spectrum is at least 10 percent more than the target one right so in that case this requirement is not being fulfilled you will apply a slightly more factor to make it even higher such that the, the in that particular time period range the modified earthquake will have a spectrum which is slightly higher than the target one at least 10 percent higher than the target one so different codes provide us guidelines about what factor should be applied uh, for this spectral scaling right so the most uh, easy one or direct one obviously it will be not be most accurate one is to just simply match the pgas one approach could be to match the the peak spectral accelerations but there is a more systematic way to do that it's not that you just match two numbers there is a whole range of uh, time periods in which you should consider that the the spectrum of modified ground motion should not be less than the target one obviously if your actual spectrum modified ground motion spectrum is higher than the target spectrum then you are conservative right target is the is the one which is the minimum you should have in your uh, th this is the level which should be exceeded or at least should be equal the second technique this one is spectral scaling right scaling as the name indicates you are not modifying the frequency content of your ground motion you are simply modifying its amplitude the second technique on let me write it on the right hand side and it is called spectral matching and in this technique you actually uh, modify the frequency content of ground motion you not only apply a scale factor but you add small waves in your time history at different locations and you subtract few and every time you do that you check whether how the spectrum is match is is being modified and you iteratively keep on doing it until the spectrum of the final modified ground motion exactly match with the target spectrum right so if your target spectrum is this one and your actual spectrum of the as recorded earthquake is let's say something like this and the history is again available obviously we have downloaded it from that we constructed the spectrum so history is available ug dot dot one particular earthquake component versus time period uh, versus the time so the spectral matching says that you keep on adding small wavelets small waves right of different amplitude at different locations along the history and subtract also if required but uh, every time you do a small change in your frequency content since you are adding waves which means you are changing frequency so every time you ch make a small change you again plot the spectrum of of the modified earthquake 
and see whether it goes close to your target or not right so you keep on doing it until you get uh, an earthquake which is so modified that its its modified earthquake spectrum looks like this exactly on the target spectrum like this so it's like matching or, or it's like matching your earthquake uh, with the target at all time periods here you can match them in scaling you can match just for one time period or two time periods you can select a scale factor uh, which will which will uh, result in the intersection of these two lines at maybe one or two locations or just few locations so the spectral acceleration of modified earthquake and target will be same only for few time periods in the case of spectral scaling but for spectral matching it will be same for all time periods right and obviously for doing this iterative process we may not do it manually we require some automation so there are uh, algorithms available proposed by different researchers which perform this exercise some perform it in the frequency domain they are called frequency domain spectral matching methods and some do it in the time domain as i have written here shown here that in time domain you are adding wave and you are subtracting wave and you are keep on doing it based on some uh, matching or comparison between the actual target spectrum and the actual spectrum and finally you keep on doing it for many times until you get an earthquake modified earthquake which have a spectrum which is like this exactly matching with the target spectrum so these are the two techniques scaling or matching scaling can be done manually matching for matching you require some automation some program so there are uh, pros and cons of both of these methods uh, there are few researchers which say that scaling is better than matching because you are not kind of destroying the earthquake you are keeping it original frequency content so whatever is the damage potential uh, you uh, or whatever is the signature of that actual geological phenomena which produced that earthquake you keep that signature in it right you just uh, amplify or deamplify it Uh, but spectral matching on the other hand you will you you are simply just uh, changing its frequency content so it's like changing the type of earthquake so now the final modified earthquake it may look completely different from the the original as recorded earthquake it depends on what spectrum you used for the for the spectral matching you may start with an earthquake which look like this and you may match it with a spectrum which which may have this shape maybe this shape a very long period earthquake so the algorithm will keep on modifying the history of earthquake until its spectrum will from this it will become this matching with the target spectrum so it's like you are you completely change the type of earthquake from short period you convert it into a long period earthquake right so it's like completely modifying the earthquake so therefore some researchers say that uh, if you are using the earthquakes for the design of new buildings and the purpose is to let the building excite in all possible ways in which the future earthquake can excite that building then i think this is matching may not be a good idea right the original intention of using more than one earthquake like 3 or 7 or now 11 was to account for the record to record variability there is a variability in ground motion from record to record right each record have a different frequency content and it have a different tendency to excite your building right so if you have multiple earthquakes you will excite your building in all possible ways in which the future earthquake can excite right so but once you perform spectral matching you reduce or almost kill that variability 
So, this is one reason why many researchers recommend that if your purpose is to design a new building, so that you get the design demands, you go for scaling. right? But if your purpose is some other, for example, in research you always compare for example, one method with another method, in which and let us say one method is based on response spectrum, the use of response spectrum and the other method is based on the use of time histories. So, in order to make that comparison meaningful, you should keep the hazard level exactly same. So, that the actual difference may be attributed to the difference of different analysis methods. right? So, for that purpose obviously, spectral matching will be a better choice, because uh, for example, let us assume that you want to compare the RSA results, which means elastic model static analysis with R factor. You want to compare it with the actual non-linear time history analysis results. If the R factor is very accurate, if the static analysis is as accurate as the dynamic analysis, then these two methods should match. right? Because the intention of R factor is to account for non-linearity, which is explicitly accounted in NLRHA and the static analysis is approximating the same peak results, which can be expected at from the dynamic analysis. So, so let us say that you are carrying out a study, in which you are comparing RSA results with NLTHA results or NLRHA results. So, obviously, for this study you must use spectral matching. If you use spectral scaling, then that difference between two analysis procedures may be attributed to the difference in their spectra also. right? In spectral scaling, you will never be able to exactly match the complete spectrum. So, depending upon your time periods where they locate in the spectrum, the actual dynamic analysis and the response spectrum both may give you different results, because of that uh, difference in the their spectrum. right? The spectrum of actual earthquakes may not be exactly matched with the target one. So, but, but if you use uh, spectral matching, then they are exactly matched. So, whatever is the difference between analysis results, it is actually the difference between uh, the analysis procedures and not because of the this scaling or matching issue. right? Similarly, if you want to identify the inherent weaknesses or in a, in a particular structure or if your target is to check the design adequacy or depending upon what your target is, you have to decide between scaling and matching. right? So, the assumptions of both procedures or implications of both methods of modification of ground motion, you should keep in mind. 